having learned what I've learned, it would be kind of, it wouldn't be right to not share it with other people and to help them kind of unlock their potential. Welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're going to hear from Sensei Brandon Beninati as we jump into episode 137. At Whistlekick, we make the world's best sparring gear, but here on Martial Arts Radio, we bring you the web's best podcast on the traditional martial arts twice a week. Welcome. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm the host and founder of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. Thank you to the returning listeners, and welcome to all of you who've checked us out for the very first time. Have you seen our sparring gloves? They're lightweight, breathable, and still incredibly durable. There's nothing else like them on the market, which is why you should get over to whistlekick.com to get your pair. If you want the show notes, including links to everything we talk about today with Sensei Brandon, you can find those at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you're not on the newsletter list, do it now. We send out exclusive content, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests for the show. As a thank you for joining, we'll send you our top 10 tips for martial artists, an exclusive podcast episode. Sign up for the newsletter at our website. I've known today's guest, Sensei Brandon Beninati, for a couple years. I was first introduced to him by Master Adam Grogan, who was our guest all the way back on episode five. I had the chance to attend 2015 Super Summer Seminars with Sensei Brandon and really enjoyed his personality and his approach to the martial arts. He's a dedicated, passionate martial artist who truly enjoys his life and his training. I enjoyed our conversation, and I think you will too. Sensei Brandon, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Thank you for having me. Well, I appreciate you being here again, and I'll probably allude to this in the intro. This is the second time we're doing this, of course. Technology failed the first time. Uh, I really appreciate you coming back and doing this again. It was it was a great interview, but the recording setup that we use um, did not do what it was supposed to do. The recording was there. Audio quality was not there, so uh, fortunately we've coordinated to do this again. But, you know, the funny thing is we didn't have to say anything. I didn't have to tell anybody, but I do want everybody to know that you've been generous with your time twice now, and I really appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. It's it's a great opportunity, so I want to make sure that we got a chance to do it right. Thank you. So let's start. Tell everybody how you got started in the martial arts. Uh, I got started in martial arts when I was uh, around six years old. Um, I actually grew up in a military family. My dad was in the Air Force. Um, and so I actually got started overseas uh, when we lived in Germany. I was doing uh, Taekwondo there um, during elementary school. And then um, eventually we moved to England where I switched styles to uh, Shorin Ru, which is an Okinawan style. I did that for a few years while we lived there. Um, and then eventually I moved to the U.S. where I live in New York, and uh, I've been doing um, a hybrid style of, of Taekwondo and Shotokan uh, ever since then. Okay. So what was it that got you into the martial arts in, in the first place? You know, was, had, you, had you seen an old Bruce Lee movie or, you know, was it parental pressure? Uh, not so much parental pressure as it was actually like parental inspiration. Uh, my dad was involved in martial arts, and I just thought it was cool, you know, and wanted to be like dad and and try to get out there and do the same things he was doing. Um, and he had trained for you know a good few years with me when I first started. Uh, unfortunately, he had um, you know some different uh, health issues with his knees and things at the time, um, so he had to stop training. Um, but I just kept going with it, um, and you know a lot of what I did. Um, I kind of did to, to honor him as I kept going, um, just, you know, trying to do the things that he wasn't able to accomplish. And, and, um, you know, he was definitely the inspiration for me to get started with it. Uh, and then of course, you know, seeing all the different, he was a big fan of Bruce Lee. You know, I don't, I don't know anybody who isn't uh, a fan of Bruce Lee. So, you know, watching all of his different movies and things, um, was always a, was always a fun way to experiment. Sure. Now I didn't grow up in a military family. I haven't done any, international living you know I've, I've moved around a little bit but only in new england did you find that it was easier to have martial arts to fall back onto i don't even know if that's good grammar to fall back on <laughs> there we go uh as you moved around 
Um, it was definitely a, a very grounding uh, experience for me. You know, it didn't, didn't matter where I lived. I was always able to uh, find a way to pick that up somewhere. And it didn't so matter w- what style it was. Um, it was just about like, okay, I need to be involved in martial arts and this is what I need to be doing. So no matter where I went, um, I always tried to find it in, in some way. Um, and it, it, it did help, you know, because it was you know, easier to make friends that way because they were all involved. In, in that same sort of thing. Um, and even if I, you know, initially had trouble making friends, I would always have, you know, martial arts to, to kind of, um, keep me going. Yeah. Okay. I can, I can see that. So that gives us some context as to who you are and why you started training. And, you know, we'll get into more about why you're still training as we move along, but here on martial arts radio, almost everything we do is story driven. So I'd like you to tell us your best martial arts story. Uh, my best martial arts story. Well, a um, number of years ago, actually seven years ago, as of uh, November 7th, <laughs> funny enough, uh, I met my now fiance, uh, Kira. And I met her actually through martial arts because she is also, um, she's also a black belt. And I met her when we were on a cycle to um, promote together. We happen to be promoting. I don't remember the ranks at the time. Um, since a few years, a few years back, but, um, we ended up, uh, training together during one of our, uh, during one of the weekend rehearsals that we do for a big show that we do for our black belt, uh, graduations. And, um, we ended up, I asked her out after a, a tournament actually. Um, of course she said yes. And then, um, you know, ever since then we've been involved in, um, martial arts together. Um, you know, we don't go to the same school, but, um, you know, we've, we've, we actually live together now. So it ends up, uh, you know, we're involved at each other's schools for, you know, a few different events throughout the year. Um, and it's just nice to, you know, have somebody who's my best friend and I get to share one of my, my favorite hobbies with, um, as well. So it's, um, it's definitely been uh, a fun ride so far. Yeah. Now we've had quite a few people on the show that have, maybe not ended up with someone that they met from training, but you know, I I think most lifelong martial artists do some dating within the martial arts realm. I've, I've dated some people that I trained with at times, but what's it like to take that, that passion of yours and be able to share it with your partner? I think, I think the the best thing about it is that, you know, for, for many people, martial arts is, I mean, martial arts is a lifestyle, right? There's, there's people who, who do it as a hobby and, you know, it's just, it's just like any other, you know, let's say, uh, other sport, you know, like they might play soccer or basketball or football, something along those lines. And, you know, they do it as a means of like physical fitness and that's, you know, purely what they choose to do, to use it for. And then there's, you know, people who, who do it as part of their lifestyle and it just, it affects everything that they do, you know, not just while they're on the floor training, but also outside of, of training. Um, and, you know, being able to talk about that with somebody, uh, you know, anytime, um, and being able to have them understand where you're coming from and, um, and just really understand like how much, uh, it makes up a part of who you are. Um, that that's a really nice uh, connection to have with someone. Yeah, I, I can I can see that, and I'm sure that you know anybody out there that has spent a lot of time with in, in a relationship. I mean, someone who doesn't train or at least doesn't have uh, a deep physical pursuit that they're really passionate about, like martial arts, it can be tough to explain. I mean, you know, we've had guests on the show that have talked about what we do in a sense is kind of crazy. You know, we hang out with our friends and we beat on them and and we sweat a lot and we work really hard to improve, you know, some, some minutia. I mean, really, but you know, here you don't have to explain what that is, what that, that call is to your partner. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, it definitely is. And, And you know, the, the, the little things are the, are the most fun for me. Um, you know, I like to, I like to pick stuff apart and understand like, you know, how does this work or how can this be made better? 
um, you know, does this look good? Does it feel good? Um, you know, and just kind of, uh, go through those things. Um, you know, if, if not with her, then, you know, by myself. Sure. Now the question that always comes up whenever people hear about a couple that trains, do you guys spar together? <laughs> um, we, we sparred one time, uh, at a tournament, which was a very, very strange experience. Um, it, it, uh, it just made for a really weird ride home. <laughs> um, and, uh, we've never done that again since, um, you know, we, we wrestle or whatever, just playing around, but we've never actually gotten in there and, and, uh, and sparred with each other. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's not something that I'd recommend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I, I won't put you on the spot and ask you any, anything more about how that sparring match went. So other than martial arts though. What else gets you going? You have any other hobbies or pursuits? Uh, well, I like to run. Um, you know, part of it is required for testing purposes, but but naturally, I just I enjoy running. Which you know, thankfully for me, I don't have to. You know, I don't have to uh, force myself to to enjoy it. Um, you know, it sometimes motivation to get out there and actually run is is difficult, and I think that's you know the number one thing for anybody that likes to to run is or just do any sort of exercise in general is, is the motivation to actually start. Um, but once you get going, it's, it's great. Um, you know, I, I do a portion of, uh, running barefoot, which people think I'm crazy for. Um, but you know, I don't like wearing shoes and I chose a profession where I get to be barefoot almost all the time. Um, so I think it just kind of comes naturally. Um, I also like to uh, do yoga from time to time, which you know also complements martial arts. It's good uh, cross training for for flexibility and just kind of uh, being able to sort of kind of calm myself down, get out of my head. Um, I like listening to podcasts, uh, which is you know kind of funny being on one now. <laughs> um, and then uh, um, I'm a huge fan of uh, Apple and Apple products. Um, you know, I like to research basically anything that they've got going on, um, cause it's a potential thing that I might buy in the future. So I get to have fun with that sort of stuff. Um, what's and your, just in general, what's your sorry. favorite Apple product? What's... My fool. Oh God, <laughs> favorite if had, Apple if you product. If you had to pick one, if somebody had to, you know, you could, you could have alternatives, you know, you could have non Apple alternatives to all of these things, but if you, you could only have one, what would it be? If I could only have, I, yeah, you know, I mean, I'd have to say my iPhone. I mean, that's, that's gotta be the, the big thing. That's kind of what brought Apple into the, to the mainstream the past, you know, uh, well, coming up on 10 years next year will be the 10th anniversary yeah. of it. So, um, yeah, it definitely, it changed, uh, consumer electronics. And I think that, you know, it's, it's been a great, uh, it's been a good thing for, for technology. So the martial arts for so many of us gives us a foundation for life, you know, and whether it's defending ourselves or just becoming a better person, we have that context to reflect back on. Think about a time in your life where things maybe didn't go so well and how you were able to use your martial arts experience to move forward or grow. Um, you know, I think there's been a number of times actually throughout my life where, you know, if things are hard outside of the dojo. I was always able to come in and train. You know, my, my thing was always, you know, when I, uh, when I walk through the door, I leave my problems at the door and I just try not to pick them up on my way out. Um, and, you know, no matter how stressed I was or, you know, there have been a number of things that have gone on, you know, outside of training that affect my life. Um, and I try to just work through them, you know, in training, it's a great, you know, stress reliever. I can, I can get in there and, and work out all my frustration and, you know, people, people always ask me like, Oh, Hey, how do you, you know, how are you so happy all the time? Or you're always smiling. And it's just, it's because I get to, I don't have to, uh, carry, you know, the same stresses around that, that, um, you know, a lot of people unfortunately do, um, because they don't have those sort of outlets. Um, for that stuff. Um, 
you know, there's been times, you know, going back to when I was young, a little younger, um, you know, being in high school, you think like the world's going to end as soon as some, some, you know, really difficult school project comes up or, or there's a test or, you know, anything like that. And, um, you know, I was always able to, to kind of work through those things. And then later on through, you know, college, there's different issues. Um, you know, thankfully I've been able to, uh, avoid a lot of, um, life's potentially more devastating, uh, scenarios. Um, but for any time that I have come up against an obstacle, um, martial arts has always been a way to, uh, to work through it. Right on. You've had a number of instructors over your martial arts career. And if we're to take out those couple folks, who would you say has been the most influential person on your martial arts? Uh, the most influential person would have to be um, my my current instructor. I've I've been with her uh, the longest. Um, you know, she's she's kind of been my mentor uh, all the way through my training. Um, you know, when I was uh, first starting at the school, I was really concerned with um, you know just kind of my own individual purpose there, you know, training to get better and, and everything. Um, but then as I started to, uh, grow up through the ranks, you know, I, I achieved my black belt, which was, a, which, a, which is a huge accomplishment, um, you know, for anyone. And I just decided that, you know, I was going to keep going. I didn't want to stop, you know, training. Um, you know, a lot of people, I think, uh, sadly think that black belt is the end. Um, and I really just think that it's, you know, it's a giant step but it's, it's really the first, you know, big, big step. And then you continue, um, you know, you can learn a lot. Uh, I've actually learned a lot more as a black belt, um, you know, advancing through different ranks than I ever did when, when I was younger, um, and in lower ranks. And, you know, she's, she's just been, um, really instrumental in, in my ability to, uh, be where I am now. Um, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an instructor who's on her staff uh, I'm the head guy on the floor and I wouldn't be able to do the things that I do now had she not been there to guide me through that process. Uh, I'm starting to, uh, have been learning a lot about the, uh, the business side of things. Um, you know, that's my, my future hope is to, to actually, um, be in charge of everything and, and own and operate a, a school. Um, and she's been, uh, been a huge, uh, help in, pushing me towards that, uh, end goal. What do you think makes a great instructor? You're an instructor yourself. You've had at least one excellent instructor. You know, we, we haven't really talked about the specifics of, of your past instructors, but you know, clearly you, you hold this individual in very high regard. So you have something to model yourself after what, what do you, what do you think makes someone successful as a martial arts instructor? Uh, I think that the the ability to connect with your students is is a very big thing. Um, you know, being able to be adaptable, you have to be somewhat flexible with you know how you you can't teach everyone the same way necessarily. Um, you know, I'm not the only instructor at our school, and we have um, you know we have a, a, a few different ones, and everybody kind of has their own personality. Uh, and while we're all trying to accomplish the same end goals with, you know, learning techniques and, and instilling uh, discipline and respect and, and all of the different things that you want to get out of martial arts, uh, each instructor has their own way of going about doing that. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, that flexibility it, within an individual, too, is is important because, you know, not every student is going to receive the information the same way. Um, you know, I'm constantly trying to come up with different ways to explain things to students, um, because, you know, most of them will understand something that I'm saying, but then there's those handful of students that just aren't getting it. So I have to come up with a different way to explain it so that they get the same information that everybody else is. Uh, so I think that, uh, flexibility is definitely, um, one of the, the more important qualities. Right on. Let's talk about competition. We know that you've participated in at least one tournament you've sparred at least one person that <laughs> <laughs> happens to be your significant other 
Uh, but I'm guessing that that's not your only experience in the competition ring. So tell us about that. Um, I've been competing since uh, pretty much since I started training. Um, you know, as soon as I was, I felt confident enough in my ability to, you know, get out there and not forget what I was doing. Um, I've been on the floor. Uh, I think competition is, is a great thing for everyone to be involved in. Um, you know, it helps you to, to push yourself and, you know, not, it's not so much about, you know, whether you can, can beat other people, but can you beat yourself when you get out there on the floor? Um, you know, can you overcome your, your fear and your nervousness, um, you know, can you remember what you're supposed to do when you're under stress? Um, and I love competition. I, you know, I, the only time I've never actually not competed before. Anytime I've been to a tournament, I've always been competing. Um, the only thing that would stop me would be an injury of some sort where it would be, you know, very stupid to get on the floor, um, and compete. Uh, but thankfully I haven't, uh, had to deal with any of those sort of injuries. Um, and uh, I've been to um, some larger tournaments, which is always fun because you get to meet new people and the, the level of competition is higher. And um, it's, it's always about, you know, finding that next level. All right? I go out and find people who are better than me so that I can invite them to the tournaments that I usually go to so that I, I have more challenge. Um, and I try to do that for, for everybody. Um, you know, the nice thing about that is, you know, once you start to do that, then then they bring some of their students and then their students challenge your students and and everything. Everybody gets to grow and learn together. Um, and competition is a great way to do that. Mm, absolutely. What's your favorite part of, of competition? Is it is it sparring? Is it forms? Do, do uh, you do I both? definitely I definitely like open hand forms. Um, I do. I do open hand forms. I do uh, point sparring and also do weapons forms. Um, and I definitely enjoy uh, open hand forms the most. Um, I like to be in control of what I'm doing. And, you know, um, I kind of pride myself on being a technician. So for me, uh, forms was always the, the one spot where I could definitely do that because I, I can practice, you know, over and over and I can understand, um, you know, exactly how I'm supposed to do something. Um, you know, sparring has become more fun in, in recent years. Um, but it's, it's also unpredictable, um, in the way that forms is not. So, um, it's always been a challenge for me, um, but I have gotten better at it over the years. Excellent. And when you compete with weapons, do you have a preferred weapon? Um, I started off when I first did weapons training, um, well, competition wise, uh, I started off with commas, um, which I liked. Uh, it was more like open hand forms um, than some other weapons. Uh, and then um, in recent years, I've, I've taken up a bow staff, um, and I really like that for, for competition purpose as well. Um, I've done a little bit of, of side training, but never, never to the point where I was uh, competition ready with it. Um, but yeah, I definitely, uh, you know, I, I, like, I like both the Kama and the bow. They're both, uh, they're both good weapons. So. Nice. If you could train with anyone that you haven't yet had the opportunity to, and they can be alive or dead anywhere in the world, any time in history, who would that be and why? Oh, boy. Um, there's a lot of people. <laughs> there's a lot of people out there. Um, and, you know, I think the, the, best, uh, the best thing about martial arts is that there's so many people involved in it, and there's always someone who's better than you. Uh, that has, you know, um, knowledge that you don't, has expertise that you don't. Um, and one of the one of the coolest things that I've had the opportunity to, to do is to go to different uh, seminars and conventions and, and, you know, large scale events where there's people from all over um, that, you know, might just teach you how to punch differently. Um, and and that can make all the difference. Um, so I don't know that there'd be any one person. Um, you know, outside of like somebody like Bruce Lee, you know, I don't know there'd be any one person that I'd want to, uh, to train with, uh, so much as actually train with as many people as possible. So I'd rather expose myself to, you know, lots of different styles and, and lots of different people, um, which I've had the opportunity to do, um, quite a few times over the, the, the years. Uh, and it's just been, it's been a great experience. 
you know, that's, that's how you make friends and that's how you, you network with people. And, um, I think that, uh, you know, I don't want to limit myself to, to who, um, or what I'm doing. I just kind of want to, uh, get a little bit of everything. For sure. Let's talk about movies. You have any favorite martial arts movies? Uh, let's see my favorite martial arts movies. Hmm. I've seen a few. Um, I like um, anything by with uh, Donnie Yen in it. He's he's great. Uh, I love his his fight choreography is is really good. Um, anything with Tony Jaa, he's also great. Like I like the Ang Bak series. Um, the first one was was the best. The other two get a little bit um, weird, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like Tony Jaa. I like Donnie Yen. Uh, the Ip Man, Ip Man series of movies is also great. Um, you know, the, the part where he does that, like 10 man Kumite was, was crazy. Um, you know, there's, there's all sorts of awesome stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. Big, a lot of big dramatic fight scenes. Oh yeah. Donnie Yen that just tons of fun. Cool. How about books? Are you a reader? Uh, I do like to read. Uh, I don't read as often as I probably should. Um, but, uh, you know, I've, I tend to read things to kind of, uh, escape <laughs> to get away from stuff. So I just like to read stuff for fun. Um, most of the time things like, uh, you know, fantasy, um, I have read, uh, some different, uh, biographies or memoirs. Um, one of my favorite books was the um, Steve Jobs book by Walter Isaacson. Um, again, being an Apple fan, of course I have to, you know, love Steve Jobs. <laughs> sure. Um, and, uh, and I've read some other books, you know, um, since I like to run, I, I've read, uh, a couple of, um, books about, um, some athletes that, uh, you know, have accomplished insane things. And it's just kind of cool to, to think that, you know, the human body is able to accomplish those sort of things. We don't have a ton of martial arts type books like that, do we? You know, it tends to be on technique or philosophy and not the achievements of any individuals. Yeah. And I think, you know, maybe part of that is, is, um, not, not to put down the people that run or, or do any of these other sports that are, you know, or books that are achievement based, but, you know, martial arts is, I mean, outside of competition, there's not really much that you can boast about achievement wise or, or that you would really want to, um, you know, I think like, Oh, one thing you could boast about would be like, Oh, I'm a 10th degree black belt, you know? And, and I think that, um, I really think that once you've reached that level, that that's just not something that's on your mind. Um, you know, you don't, you don't care to, to, to brag about it. Um, uh, or, you know, even consider it, uh, you know, a, a huge accomplishment, you know, it's just kind of part of who you are at that point. Um, rank and other accomplishments in the martial arts does seem to carry humility with it for the majority of people, as opposed to other sports where, skill. I mean, we, we, we tend to hold up, you know, I, I'm thinking of, you know, pro sports like basketball and football, and we expect these individuals to have these larger than life personalities. And sometimes yeah. I, I wonder if we force them into being big and ridiculous with how they conduct themselves. And we don't have that expectation of martial artists. Yeah, I think, you know, with um, with a lot of other sports, um, you know, there's a lot of television involved and, um, you know, it's it's meant to be entertainment. So you, you want to see the the person who's who's going to grab attention and, you know, it's doing amazing things because, you know, if they don't constantly keep pushing the envelope, then then people would get bored. I think, um, you know, if, if somebody's going to, you know, you want the you want the game to continue to evolve and and improve. Um, and it has been, um, over, over the years, you know, we've, we've seen, um, some, some great athletes from all different sports, you know, and, and um, you know, they accomplish things that your average person just would, you know, think would be impossible to do. Mm. It's true. And, you know, it, that brings to mind a question 
for you that isn't on the list, and I, I apologize to put you completely on the spot, but do you think the martial arts is evolving? I think that it, I think that it does. I mean, a lot of you know, martial arts. One of the one of the things that that you know, martial arts tries to do is is hold on to tradition. Um, you know, it's it's very very old. Um, you know, it's certainly older than uh, most of the sports out there. Um, and I think that you know, piece of that holding on to that tradition um, is important. Uh, you don't want to completely change things, um, but you know, as as certain understanding comes to light or maybe even science, you know, they've, they've done, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the, uh, the show fight science. Um, but they've done some, some really cool stuff. I can't remember if that's on like national geographic or might, might actually be the science channel. Um, but they do like really cool analysis of, you know, different styles and how they work and you know, who generates the most power and who's faster. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, part of that's got to be from from holding to the to the past. You know, it's important to um, keep some of that. Uh, and then, you know, as you progress through through time, to understand, like, okay, you know, this this technique works maybe a little bit better than this technique, or you know, and even if it's not on a large scale with a particular style, uh, you know, as an individual. You want to to evolve your your understanding of you know the art and you know maybe how certain uh, aspects of it work better for you as an individual um, versus maybe that would work for somebody else. So I definitely think that there there are aspects of martial arts that are are evolving, uh, even if some of it um, remains the same. Mm. I've seen that show Fight Science before and. But it's been a little while, so I'll have to dig it up. I'll drop a link in the show notes. And for anybody that might be new to the show, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is where we put all those links and everything. So check those out over there. But let's come back to talking about you. Goals. Okay. I mean, obviously, you're, you're still training. You're still active. You're still competing. And we've heard that one of your goals is to open your own school someday. But what else is keeping you motivated? You know, I'm, I'm sure you're going to the dojo for more than just the obligation of it being your career? Um, you know, I mean, at this point, I, you know, there's always the, the personal interest, right? The, you know, like you said, um, you know, becoming better in competition, pushing myself. Um, but, you know, since I've grown into the role that I have now at the school, it's become a lot about uh, the students. You know, there's, there's new generations of martial artists coming up through. Um, you know, whether they be the, the little four-year-olds or, you know, the, the adults that have decided to, you know, train later on in life. Um, and I think that it's important to uh, realize that, you know, people may come to martial arts at different points in their life. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be any less impactful uh, to them. Um, and I think that, you know, having learned what I've learned, it would be kind of, it wouldn't be right to not share it with other people. Um, and to help them kind of unlock their potential. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's one of the things that I enjoy most is, you know, is teaching. Um, you know, they say the best way to, to truly learn something is to teach it. Uh, and I think that that's been, um, been very true for, for my training. Um, you know, you have to make sure that you, you really understand something in order to, um, you know, teach someone else. Uh, and uh, I definitely enjoy that. You know, it's, it's great to be a student, um, but it's also, it's great to be a teacher as well. For sure. All right. So now's your commercial time. If someone's listening, if someone's in your area of New York, which we haven't even really talked about where that is, uh, you can let people know if they want to come by and train or if they want to get a hold of you or, or whatever else, tell people how to get a hold of you and what you've got going on. Uh, well, if, if you want to get a hold of us, uh, on the internet, we've got uh, a number of, uh, options for that. We have a website, um, it's Bailey's karate.com or Bailey's karate school.com. Both of those will work. I take you to the same place. Um, our phone number is listed right on there. So if you happen to be local and you want to give us a call, um, we always like to, uh, set up a free tour of the school, um, so that you can come in check us out, you know, make sure that, that, that our school is right for you. Um, and if you're uh, really up on the social stuff, uh, we've got a Facebook page, which is uh, facebook.com slash BKS Rome. I try to make that nice and simple for people to get to. Um, 
And uh, we have a Twitter account as well, same handle, uh, at BKS Rome. Um, and uh, something, too, that, that I would like to just kind of pass along to people. Um, for those of you that, that don't uh, do Facebook or Twitter or any of those things, um, you know, if a, if a company, uh, you know, or a business such as ours uh, creates a page, it's public and you can actually view it without actually having an account yourself. Um, and I think that, you know, a lot of people get scared away perhaps from, from social media because they think, oh, I have to have an account and I have to put my information out there. Um, but really, you know, the purpose of our page is to let you know what we're doing um, and to kind of just get that information out there. Uh, and it's, so it's visible whether you have an account or not. Um, so I think that's, uh, you know, important to understand. Um, and uh, we have an introductory program uh, that we, we run, uh, you know, different specials throughout the year. Um, but currently we're doing a six week introductory program for $89. Uh, that includes a uniform. So, you know, you don't have to do a separate purchase for that. Uh, it's class twice a week. Uh, that'll get you get you started and, you know, you can get your feet wet and see if uh, martial arts is really something that you might enjoy. Um, and, and again, that's for anybody who's, uh, you know, four years old or, or older. I don't think that, you know, the sky's the limit. You know, you can't be too old to, to start. Um, one of our oldest students who's uh, almost a black belt, he is 65, 66 years old. He's a grandfather to a couple of our other students uh, who also train. Um, and, you know, I think it's great to, you know, have a family atmosphere. Um, we have a number of students who are all you know, either siblings or, or sons and daughters and moms and dads, you know, it's, it's great to, to train together. Totally. Completely agree. And you're right. We don't tend to talk about the older demographic and how to include them. Martial arts seems to be something that most people feel if they didn't start it as a child, they can't pick it up later on. But you've probably seen just as I have that a large number of the adults that start have children. You know, that they, they spend that time watching and realizing, hey, I can do this. Absolutely. You know, I think that uh, and I think part of the reason why they think that, you know, they can't do it as adults is because, you know, oh, you know, I'm older now. I'm not as flexible or as strong or, um, you know, I have a crazy work schedule, which, you know, may, may very well be the case. Um, but, you know, the, the thing about um, martial arts is that it's kind of it's not necessarily for everyone, but it is for everyone. Um, you know, you may not enjoy it, but uh, it doesn't mean that you can't, uh, you know, take it at your own pace and grow into it, you know, just as anybody else does. Um, you know, it doesn't matter that you're older. You know, make modifications if you if you have injuries or, um, you know, something that you, you fear might hold you back. Just, um, you know, do what you can and, and you'll you'll get a lot out of it. Right on. So as we close up, any parting advice for the people listening? Um, you know, I think uh, exposing yourself to as many martial artists as you can, you know, get different experiences, different styles. Um, you know, as I've said, uh, competition and seminars um, have been huge for me uh, just in meeting new people, um, you know, making those friends, making those connections, um, you know, seeing that there's more than just, you know, your style out there, um, is, is great for, um, improving your training. Um, you know, as I was saying before, if, uh, if you're struggling in your training because of, of an injury or something of that sort, um, you know, just remember every day is an opportunity to make progress, you know, whether, you know, it doesn't mean that you, you have to always get a PR or, um, you know, do, uh, better, you know, every time, you know, certain aspects, I mean, the goal obviously is always to, to try to improve. Um, and every day should be, you know, a goal, but, um, you know, just realizing that you don't have to be perfect, uh, and, you know, continuing to do something consistently, uh, is, is good in its own way. Sensei Brandon has embraced his life and I'm quite sure that those training with him are all the better for having him as their instructor. One thing we forgot to discuss during the show is Kicks for Kids, the registered nonprofit that his school runs, funding not just martial arts tuition for those that can't afford it, but also soccer. Check out that organization. We've got links in the show notes. They've got a Facebook page and a website. They're doing some good work, and they do deserve our support. Thank you, Sensei Brandon, for coming on the show. 
Over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, you can find the show notes, including links and titles to everything we discussed. There's also a place to sign up for that newsletter that we keep talking about. You can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. And our username is Whistlekick. If you want to know what's going on behind the scenes of the show, you can check out our not-quite-secret Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, Behind the Scenes. We're always looking for new guests for the show, so if you want to throw your hat in the ring, or perhaps you want to nominate your instructor or somebody else, get on over to the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, and fill out that form. If you have feedback, we'd love to hear that too. If you like the show, be sure you're subscribing, and you know we're always asking for those reviews. They really help us out a lot iTunes reviews help us the most because that's where most people, if not get their podcasts, learn about them. So if you haven't left us a review yet, if you're a longtime listener, please, you can't see, I've got my hands together doing that kind of little begging, praying thing. Uh, it would really mean a lot to us. So take a couple minutes, help us out. Remember the products you can find at whistlekick.com, like our sparring gloves. And if you're a school owner or a team coach, remember wholesale.whistlekick.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.